How's it gaming? I'm Phil in the Blanks, and welcome to New Super Mario Bros. for the DS. Uh, released in 2006, it was the uh, first 2D Mario game since Super Mario Land 2 on the Game Boy more than a decade before it. Let's just jump in there. Mario game, let's erase my little test right there. Let's get rid of that. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Let's just jump in. And here we go. There's Peach's castle and all its 16-bit <laughs> glory it looks like. And oh no, stuff is happening. And the toads who are four pixels tall are running away. Hello, Bowser Jr. It's nice to see him uh, continue on. This was uh, four years after Mario Sunshine. So it was cool to see that they were like, yeah, let's keep going with, with Bowser Jr. He's not a one-off character. He's, he's in there now. And there we go. Not a lot of story, which is great. It's a 2D Mario game. I do not need a lot of story for that. Boom. Huzzah. All right, we got a cool, classic-looking world map. I love it. Let's just jump in there. And uh, the new Super Mario Bros. games was like a way for 2D Mario to basically come back. At that point, it was basically dead for 3D Mario games and spin-offs and that sort of thing. And they're like, well, how do we reintroduce a generation to 2D Mario games? And this probably was the best idea, having a very classic style Mario game, very like an updated Mario 1, mixed in with a little bit of Mario 3 in there. Uh, and I think it worked, it's pretty good. I like it a lot. The big gimmick though, when they were advertising this game, was the Mega Mushroom, which is very much just a gimmick, but it's pretty cool. It's a show that, you know, these aren't sprited Mario characters, this is a full 3D Mario, and they could just scale them up. You can just smash everything, which is very fun. I do like this. And uh, you fill up those meters at the top, and when you do that, every little block you fill up gets you a 1-up when the uh, Mega Mushroom ends. Hooray, 5-up. Awesome, let's just beat the level. We're gonna go right back in there because we missed a ton of stuff by doing that. But it is a very fun little introduction to a new two-dimensional Mario game with a new <laughs> kind of gimmick power-up. But yeah. First thing you might have noticed too while actually playing the game was that Mario was the only three-dimensional character. Uh, the DS was not super powerful. It was like... More powerful than Super NES, obviously. But 3D wasn't a huge thing for it, even though they did actually port Mario 64 for this. Um, but for the most part, they didn't do a lot of 3D. So Mario is actually the only 3D character you're gonna see other than like Peach and some uh, some um, mini bosses and stuff. But everything else is a two-dimensional sprite, including the enemies. Here's the Goomba, look at that. Look at that adorable little 2D sprite. You did. And uh, Koopa Troopa, same thing. They're two-dimensional, I'm gonna avoid you. I'm not gonna get the... Uh, the uh, Mega Mushroom, obviously. But yeah, no, it's a very classic looking Mario game. And this is the other 3D thing, these star coins. Every single level has three of them, and that is the game's main collectible, which is not just a collectible for the sake of being collectible. You actually spend them on different routes and that sort of thing. Let's get this up here, get you Koopa Troopa out of the way, bump. Yay, nice little climbing the sky. A lot of secrets in the first level that you skip by. Oh yes, they introduced uh, red coin challenges. Pop, here's red coins that make the uh, Yoshi's Island red coin sound, which is really cool. And after eight of them, within a time limit, you get usually a one-up, which I completely... Oh, did I get it? Did I end up getting it? No, that was coins. That's fine. But yeah, star coins. Three at every level. At the bottom of the screen, or the bottom screen, or I, I guess with this it's the... Um, to the right of uh, of the main screen here. You can see them and you'll see that I'm missing the middle one. I like how they put them in the order in which you should encounter them, uh, right after the vine that we went to, right down here. It's a nice little secret. They're very easy to find for the most part. We will be finding, of course, all of them. And uh, when you're in the overworld, the main action takes place in the top screen of the DS, while if you're in the underground like I am right now, the action takes place in the bottom screen. I like that. And I am, of course, emulating this because other than spending hundreds of dollars on getting a DS capture card, there is no real way to um, record DS games on a, on a, on a TV. And, uh, I know some DS games actually came out for the Wii U, um, but this gives me more control over how I want to record, so I'd rather do this. Uh, I actually set it up where the main screen that I'm playing on is larger than the other screen, and I'm like, I was going to do that in post, but the fact that the emulator actually comes with a feature to do that is pretty neat. It makes my job a little bit easier. So, thank you, emulator, whose name I won't divulge. There we go. Wouldn't be a 2D Mario game without the classic underworld theme. I guess, actually, Mario 2... 
um, American Mario 2 doesn't have it. Oh yeah, and um, Mario has some of his more uh, modern abilities, such as the ground pound, and you hold down, bop, 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 bop. very satisfying. He also has the wall jump, like that. And uh, I don't have any room here, but he also has the triple jump, which is very, very fun. You don't use that one very often, but it is there. You can't punch or kick like you could in Mario 64 or anything, and there's definitely no flood like in Mario Sunshine, but I found this to be a very good mix of 2D Mario gameplay with some of the 3D ideas. Um, and, and it's a shame because, like, what this game became most famous for, whoops, is that it spawned the New Super Mario Brothers series, of which there are, I believe, four games. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers, which is, of course, this one. Um, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, for the Wii, which introduced four players simultaneous play. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2, you know, the third one with the number two, which was for the 3DS, and other than the idea that you want to collect a lot of coins for no real reason, that game doesn't have a whole lot of memorable parts to it. I don't know. To me, it's the least memorable. Um, and then you have New Super Mario Brothers U for the Wii U and later release on the Switch. Uh, now, I don't know why they didn't make a New Super Mario Brothers All-Star with all four of them on the Switch. I would have bought that in an instant. Um, but yeah, the, the games were criticized for basically being very similar to one another, having the same music, having like just very similar graphics, but like obviously in HD for the Wii U and that sort of thing. Um, now I do like these games, but these complaints are not unfounded. Uh, these are very well done, they're very fun, um, and there's some good ideas, but they lack personality and charm that you, you're used to seeing in a Mario game. Um, and that's, I think, why everyone, including myself, was so excited to see Mario Wonder. Uh, because, you know, you, you got to see, like, a brand new personality in Mario and the other characters, new enemies, new, new things happening. And this one is just like, for the first one, this is fine. This is a great return to form for one game. When you do it four times in a row and it's pretty much the exact same thing, it gets a little stale. So... Out of all of them, I think Mario, um, oh, I can't destroy this, of course I can't, I wouldn't be able to leave. Uh, I think New Super Mario Bros. 2 is probably the worst, but I still don't think there's a bad one at all. They're all worth playing, and I will play all four of them for you sooner or later as we continue up the Mario uh, chronological timeline, or chrono chronological release order of the games. That's how I like to play games for the most part on this channel. Hard to believe we played Mario 1, 2, Japanese 2, 3, World, Land, Land 2, and uh, 64, and Sunshine now. This is the 10th game, I believe, in, like, the main Mario franchise, which is, like, a lot. There's, like, 20-something. I think there's, like, just under, like, 25 main Mario games. I think? Mario 1... Two. I do count two Japanese or American two as an official Mario game. Nintendo themselves have confirmed that. So, so Mario one, Mario two, Mario two again, Mario three, Mario World. That's five. Land, Land two, sixty four. Sunshine. This. That's ten. I don't know the order anymore, but New Super Mario Bros. Wii, New Super Mario Bros. Two, New Super Mario Bros. U, 3D Land, 3D World. That's fifteen. Odyssey, Galaxy, Galaxy 2, that's 18. If you count the Mario Makers, that's two more, that's 20. I don't know if you count Bowser's Fury, I don't know. Anyways, we're going back into this level. Why are we going back into this level? Well, one, you notice I missed a star coin. That's actually not the reason why I'm going back. Like most Mario games after, uh, most games and most uh, 2D Nintendo platformers in general, after Super Mario World, there are secret exits in this game, and level two has one which also houses the star coin. I do want it, so we're gonna do it. And what is the number one trick that everyone learns from Mario 1 about level 1-2 in Super Mario Bros.? And that is, you can go above the ceiling, which we're gonna do right here. No, actually we're not. We're gonna do it the next time we see one of those teeter-totter things. I like if you if you hit the um, 10 coin block block uh, uh, fast enough, you get a, we uh, a weapon, jeez. You get a machine gun, some machine gun from Mario. You get a, a mushroom out of it, I like that. So you could go up there if you want to, it's not where I want to go, it's right here. So whenever you're in an underground level in one of these new Super Mario Bros. games, because they're very, very nostalgic and based on nostalgia, look for a secret like that. There we go. Very, very cool. And you'll know it's a secret one, because you could find the one by mistake, for example. It's got a red flag. In real life, avoid red flags. In Super Mario Brothers, get a red flag. And we got the classic 
8-bit victory music. I love that. We must have had our timer at a multiple of 11, I think it's how it works. Or the la it's the last two digits, I think, match, basically. Yay! Secret area, which pretty much just allows you to... Um, oh, jeez, okay. Um, allows you to skip level 3. We're not going to skip level 3, obviously. So, jump into this mushroom house. Mushroom houses are um, pretty much what they were in... In... Uh, Mario 3, except a little bit different. Toadsworth is there, and we love Toadsworth. Plus, you get to actually kind of choose what you want. And we see the other two um, power-ups in this game. I want to get the blue tur turtle shell. Yeah, there we go. You'll also notice from Mario World, we have a uh, a, a power-up in stock and reserve, uh, which you can only get if you tap the, the touch screen, which is very frustrating. But uh, I want that blue shell for an upcoming um, secret exit. The other power-up that we didn't see yet is the Mini Mushroom, which is also kind of an odd one. Like, none of the power-ups in this game are, are amazing, like the new ones. You, of course, have the Fire Flower, because it's the Fire Flower. But the other two aren't great, though I think the Mini Mushroom comes back. I don't think the Turtle Shell does. I don't think uh, Mega Mushroom comes back either. But yeah. Little things like that. the fact that this is for the DS and they can scale everything as opposed to the Super NES that couldn't scale everything. I love how when you go in the air like that, it, it zooms out just a little bit. And the the mushrooms can all rotate very specifically. And there's a lot more deformation to like the world and the area. And I like that a lot. It's very neat. Maybe Yoshi's Island for the Super NES could do that. Because Yoshi's Island was an incredibly advanced game for the, uh, for the Super NES. Man, I love that game. Oh, we got another red coin challenge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. You don't have the spin in midair in this one yet? No, you don't. I don't think so. No, I guess you don't. I thought you did for some reason. You probably get it in New, uh, New Super Mario's Wii. I think it's because it was introduced in um, Mario Galaxy which is the next Mario game after this one. This is probably why it's not in this. Just gonna take a swig. I'm talking a lot today. Ah, yum, yum. So there, at that signpost there, you can see I can spend my my uh, hard-earned star coins. You need five star coins. Yeah, sure. And that will allow me to save my game because unlike what you think a portable Mario game should do, you cannot save whenever you want. You save either when you spend uh, star coins, or if you beat a fortress or castle. I don't know why they decided to do that. It's very weird in my opinion, but there you go. Green mushroom houses give you uh, one-up chances. Hello, Toesworth. I love you. I miss you. <laughs> Toesworth is one of my favorite characters. Gonna mix them all up? Okay, of course. All right, let's hope not to get Bowser. Okay, that's one. Ooh, times two. It's a shame that you get that right away. If you get the times two right away, I think you just straight up don't get anything, but ooh, well, we got it without getting Bowser. That's pretty cool. Obviously, the best thing to do is get the uh, all the one ups and then the times two, and then then that's the most I think you can get, which is a lot actually. Now that I think about it, awesome. Let's jump into World One Fortress. Every world has at least one fortress, and the fortress mini boss is unfortunately always the same. Oh, hello, Dry Bones. You are also three dimensional. Okay, well. Whenever I see a three-dimensional enemy, I'm really going to pay attention to it now, because I've never really paid attention to that when I was younger. But yeah, it's always the same mini-boss, which is a shame. It is Bowser Jr., which is cool. I like that. He kind of replaces Boom Boom. Um, and the, the area in which you fight him is sometimes very different, but he's basically the same thing every time. It's it's smack him three times, man. It's it's Mario. And that's kind of the, the problem with this game. As fun as it is, and as cool as it is to see the classic, you know, Mario stuff, it's very, very traditional to a fault. Um, when it didn't really need to be all the whole way there. Um, when I was younger, like I said, I was in college uh, when this game came out, so I was, I was 21. And uh, part of me was hoping that they would keep going with the idea that, because this is a very much a, a, a really fresh take on the Mario 1 experience, that New Super Mario Bros. 2 would be like a brand new experience on Mario 2 with like vegetables and stuff. That of course did not happen at all, so that's a shame. But we're gonna go down here in this door. And I'm going to get my in-stock item, the blue turtle shell, which is very weird. You don't have any immediate powers. Don't go in this door. Instead, we're going to go to this empty spot right here, which is a secret pipe. 
and instead of having like a specific like offensive ability that you can activate anytime, you have to run, and that'll you know make you into a blue uh, turtle, like a blue Koopa. It's kind of a weird thing, but it's neat, I guess. It makes Mario look kind of fat, but <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, plus, I think you go a little bit faster when you're on that, when like in, when you're when you're on the turtle shell. So speedrunners use that a lot, and it makes it very difficult to control Mario. And here we are outside of the fortress. That's okay. We just skipped it, and we oh no, I want to get at least near the top of this. <laughs> you don't need to get the top of the um, the uh, geez, Phil, the flagpoles. The game doesn't keep track of that like some of the later ones. Come on, man. I like to get it anyways. It's points. Not that points matter. Oh, wow. Jeez. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just fall off. Ooh, another fireworks show. And once again, we're going to go right back into that stage because we got to beat it normally. And you might be thinking, holy crap, Phil, there must be so many secret exits. There's not. There's like 14 of them or something like that. There just seems to be a lot right near the beginning of the game. What sucks, though, is that you can't tell if a level has one. In Mario World, if a level had one... Uh, I want to keep my... Good, okay, I want to keep my shell. Um, if a level had one, it would appear as a red level on the world map. This game doesn't do that. Uh, it just... You, I guess, guess? I'm not sure if I how I figured it out when I was a kid. Kid. I was 21 when this came out. <laughs> it just feels old to me now. You know what I mean? I guess. I mean... Jeez. Almost 20 years old now already. I'm glad they went with Mario Wonder, though. Boink. Just gonna slowly do this. Fun. Probably not gonna keep my turtle shell for very long. It's not one that I feel very safe with, so... Up we go, up we go, up we go. And there it is. There's the next uh, star coin, which we do need to beat the level. Um, ooh, careful. 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 Um... You can't just, like, die and you have it. You need to actually beat the level. What is this? Oh, that's probably if I if I went to that secret area and didn't have the turtle shell. It would kick me out there. Let's time this right for this cannon. Nice, there we go. Do I want that? It's probably just another, uh... Yeah, another fire flower. That's fine. Points, I guess. Alright, let's go beat up Bowser Jr. Like I said, very much Boom Boom. But he's cute. It's cuter than Boom Boom. He is smart too, though. If you go right, try to jump on him again, he'll immediately go back into his shell. Like, watch if I try to do it. I'll be like, haha! Oh no, he didn't do it. Oh well, he still got me one hit. So nice. that, that's just so nice. I beat up a, a miner. And off he goes. And Mario sits there and does nothing every single time. And there goes Princess Peach. Oh, oh, she's just getting dragged along. My goodness. You'll notice that Secret Exist gave us a cannon. The cannons are your warps to the next world or some world. I don't know where this goes. Uh, yes, I want to save. We're not going to be taking the cannons because, like, I don't know. I don't want to skip ahead because, obviously, I want to do every level. But not just that. I don't want to spoil the idea of what the level could be. Like, so the next level shaped like a pyramid there? Isn't that silhouette or is that an ice cream cone? I don't know. Anyways, I just don't want to take the warps. It basically, it's like like we're actually going the right way. So World 1-4, will be the last one today. Slide down. Whee! Oh, we have enough room now. Let's actually use our triple jump, shall we? Just so we can see it. I don't use it very often, but jump! 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 Oh, no, I didn't get the triple. No, and now I'm dead. Now I'm dead. Not really. There we go. Nice mushroom. Yeah, you don't use the triple jump very often, just because you don't have a lot of room for it. But we do get to use the mini mushroom right here. Pretty neat. Obviously, some uh, special uh, areas need the mini mushroom to get. You jump super high with the mini mushroom, and you can't defeat enemies normally. It's very dangerous. You can't even take an extra hit. One hit, you're dead. You're basically small Mario, but smaller, which makes sense. And you can run over water because you're so light. I love that. It's neat. It's actually one of the things I actually really like because it changes Mario's um, physics a lot. And it doesn't make it for very fun in terms of fighting enemies, but it's still pretty cool. I do like it. But it's not one you're going to want to keep for a long time. So if I get another power up, I'm just going to switch over to it. Don't think you can um, triple jump with it either. I'm not sure on that. Not that you really want to. There we go. 
can't do the backflip. That would have been really cool if we did the side flip. That probably would have been too difficult. All right, let's throw you down. This is always one of my favorite things in 2D Mario games. Just satisfying. Love it. So much fun. And once it hits right here, in we Ah, oh, we missed the mod up. That's fine. But down here we go. Hello. Next star coin. Do not grab those because I want to use this P-switch. Can't lift the P-switch and bring it with you. This game, um, like I said, it's very Mario 1 with a little bit of Mario 3 and almost none of Mario World, which I think is its biggest fault. Mario World introduced such a freedom with Mario. The swimming was the best in Mario World. Um, you could throw things upwards. You could grab P-switches. You can't do any of that stuff in here. And I find that really, really frustrating. Oh, I'm missing one. How am I missing one right away? I have to head back? Yeah, there it is. Wow, I don't like it when the uh, pipes send me uh, ahead of one of the things I needed. That's okay. I mean, it's right here. Just gonna grab this. Um, crap, probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, nope, nope. <laughs> well, guys, here I am forever. Damn. That sucked. I should have gone there as small Mario. Do I get to keep anything that I got? I think I keep the the one the first one I got because it was after the check or before the checkpoint. Oh no! Wow, really? Oof. Okay, well you saw me do the level pretty much, so I'll meet you right back at that last uh, that last dark one. There we go. Okay. Figured with the with the slopes right there, you just kind of slide underneath. That's this level's gimmick, anyways. All right. Well, here is whoops. <laughs> this is the end of the level right here. And with that, we're gonna call it a day. Guys, we are playing new Super Mario Brothers. I'm filling the blanks. See you guys next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.